hello. Uh, my name is Dr. Ison Karachestin, and I'm with Juan Escudero, a second year medical student. We're from the University of Texas Medical Branch, and we've been working together on URIS, which is a pressure cuff actuated emergency use resuscitation system, essentially an emergency ventilator designed for resilience, adaptability, and safety uh, with the medical supplies and common electronic components. During the beginning of the pandemic, there was an urgent need for more ventilators, as we all know, and there was a call to action for all hospitals to prepare for this shortage globally. There was also a call to open source engineers to start thinking on how we could create a, a ventilation system that would allow us to prevent having to triage um, people. We saw that in Italy, uh, anyone under 60 was able to get a ventilator, however, everyone above that age was not being ventilated. So this kind of work uh, is an emergency situation that really brought together um, collaboration and flexible action. We had a lot of um, different institutions and students and professors ask us how they could help us and they collaborated with us at different points. Um, but mainly we continued the project through the pandemic and after. So the way that we built our own ventilator was by automating an AMBU bag. Um, by putting a blood pressure cuff and using the blood, the sorry, the air and the vacuum from each of the patient's room and oscillating it with these two actuators, these valves, PVC valves, and um, an Arduino mark microcontroller. And so how it works is these types of manual resuscitators known as the AMBU bag are generally located in ambulances or remote locations. Um, they're often a go-between before someone is put on an actual ventilator. Uh, and so what we did is we automated this device using a blood pressure cuff, which is a piece of equipment you'd find in any hospital, um, which is safe, portable, and effective to, when it's inflated, squish the AMBU bag, providing a breath, and when it's vacuum from the hospital vacuum, uh, system, it can expand and it can take the, the air out. Um, so it uses a pressure sensor that detects the patient requesting a breath and a system with volume and pressure one way or another way it works is it can work automatically to help the patient breathe if they don't have enough capacity to breathe or at least to start the breath on their own. Uh, additionally, there's a double protection. If the pressure is too high, the electric valve shuts and a valve auto releases so that there's no barotrauma or pressure related trauma to the lungs from the machine. Uh, and if any failure occurs, medical staff can bag manually just by reaching around it on top of the blood pressure cuff to squeeze and release, providing and assisting in breathing. We know that there has been a lot of designs done around the AMBU bag because that was the call to action worldwide that we responded to as open source engineers. However, this design being made uh, pneumatic with the blood pressure cuff was much safer than the box, acrylic box and mechanical systems that we saw for squeezing the bag because that would allow for um, medical staff to be able to manual it bag immediately and not have a hardware um, in the way of that. So here's a diagram that shows better the system. In the middle you can see the AMBU bag with the blood pressure cuff around it. You can see that the pressure cuff is connected to a T connector which has an air valve and a vacuum valve. The reason why we need vacuum is because in order for us to evacuate the blood pressure cuff with enough time to provide the next breath, in other words, so that we could get enough breaths per minute, we needed to evacuate the bag instead of letting it depressurize on its own. Normally, AMBU bags already have a line for oxygen, and so in that case, we've connected to the oxygen that's also in a patient's room. We used an H bridge and an Arduino to control the oscillation, to control the actuation of these valves. And we had a pressure sensor 
at the um, air canal that Anaflow sensor as well, which we added later, um, to let us know how much pressure and how much volume was flowing through to the patient. Here you can see a GIF, animated GIF, of the bag in action, of the urus in action. Operating at 30 breaths per minute and achieving nearly 800 milliliters of pedal volume. Operating at 45 breaths per minute and generating a tidal volume of roughly 450 milliliters per breath. And so here are kind of the specs, the rundown of what we did. So you can see, first of all, at 800 mils tidal volume at 30 breaths per minute and 450 milliliters of tidal volume at 45 breaths per minute. So this is just kind of indicating where the speeds and the volume our machine uh, can provide. And so with these volumes and these breath speeds, we exceed the normal human lung capacity and speed, which means that our device can work for whatever patient needs it. It, it, it performs above the limit that a human could, we'll say. Um, we also have an FDA approved uh, patient air pathway pressure sensing. And so this is kind of, we discussed earlier, but this is to allow us to make sure we don't put too much pressure on the lungs so we don't provide any trauma to the lungs uh, we also have a mechanical control pop-off valve, which additionally acts in the same way. Yeah, so the, uh, the, the pressure sensor in the patient's airway allows us to, to know the change of pressure when a patient is trying to take a breath. And so there are two settings for our ventilator. However, we've only tested the automated setting as far as the animal studies go. But technically, the device has the ability to be able to provide a breath or provide a deeper breath for a patient as they're trying to breathe on their own. And the automated way would be that they're not breathing on their own at all, and so we have to provide the breath at whatever breaths per minute would be. However, if the patient is actually breathing on their own, we just listen for the actual uh, pressure sensor when there's negative pressure in the patient airway, then we know that they're trying to take a breath. And so that's how that piece of it works. And so additionally, as we're talking about the, the pressure, so there's a mechanical valve, but if that were to fail or we need more help, there is um, uh, another PEEP valve. And so that operates within the AMBU bag. It's just part of the AMBU bag too. If there's too much pressure, it releases the, the pressure. Um, and so in order to, where the air comes from for the device, it uses ambient air, because that's where the AMBU bag gets its air from. Uh, and so there's also O2 injected at a lure lock inlet. And so you can enhance the air with more O2 to better aerate the patient. It uses one quarter inch standard hoses and fittings found in supply stores. And it, uh, the device fits inside a watertight container in a 16 by 16 by 16 inch box. And so if you want to find the code for this um, device and all the other information, you can go to um, my profile and it's the flow vent interface. So you can find it here and it should also be in the information we've shared with, uh, with the summit. All right, and here's some more specs on our device. So the power supply is a 12 volt, 1.5 amp. Uh, and additionally, to operate, you need air and vac generators. Um, sorry, air and vac, and you may need generators for, for power if operating remotely. Uh, the PVC valves are stress tested at more than 62 hours. Uh, audio, there are audio and visual alarms. We use the AT Mega 328PU microcontroller. 
Um, the controls, there's on the machine, control breath sensitivity, breaths per minute, volume, and inspiratory to expiratory ratio because it's not an even flow between in and out. They have different ratios. Um, we use a medical grade pressure sensor and as we discussed before, there's the time mode, which is the automatic mode, but there also is assist mode where it can sense the patient trying to take a breath or trying to exhale and can facilitate that process. And so we submitted a um, provisional patent application and let it lapse so that nobody can patent this, ne neither us, no, no one else, therefore protecting it to being open source and remaining that way in the case that we ever have another type of emergency where we require um, ventilators. And so here you can see it labeled with all the different parts. We have a N95 filter and um, here there are four knobs which is the latest device and some of the pictures we've been showing uh, doesn't d don't show the four knobs. And this is the schematic. It's very, very, very straightforward. It just uses the pots and the um, some resistors and this toggle switch for the mode and um, and an H bridge so that it, the valves can be controlled. And here's the board that we laid out, and we were so fortunate to have some of these boards printed by Geospace here in Houston, completely free and as a gift to us. And this is us testing during the pandemic before, um, in during April. And uh, we at our facility have a simulation lab. We have an entire ICU that is a simulation that uses these robots. Um, that can breathe and uh, you can draw their blood, etc. Um, but what we were w using was not that mannequin, but rather this device here, which is the ALS 5000. And it's essentially a simulation lung, which gives us this graph and allows us to understand how much where air we're actually pushing in and what is the actual breaths per minute that we were delivering. And so the whole purpose of this project, we've talked about the pandemic, was to create something that anyone in a hospital anywhere could make. Because with the pandemic, we had all, addition to all of the, the illnesses, we also had severe supply chain issues. So the kind of goal of this is to create an open, open source product that you can find these supplies in a hospital or maybe between the hospital and supply, a hardware supply store. And so that's kind of the goal, a scalable design that can be assembled rapidly by medical and clinical staff. Um, it's safe, effective, and it's reliable. And so that kind of goes in the same thing. The patient safety was our most uh, important variable as we continue to develop this project. And so we're just going to discuss it briefly again, just because it was very important. Um, so any component in direct contact with the patient is medical grade and approved for the purpose it fulfills. The AMBU bag is FDA approved. There's PEEP and pop-off valve so we don't get any barotrauma in the lungs and a pressure sensor to understand what's going on inside the body. This design does not impede manual bagging, which is super important if it were to fail or there were to be some issue. Someone could just take over with their hand, reach over and begin bagging seamlessly. Uh, additionally, the system is designed to alleviate risk to medical staff by preventing exposure via manual ventilation because this can be done from a distance uh, and it provides precise and rates and tidal volumes. And so for the later part of our project um, and after really the urgency of, of the pandemic um, had succeeded, we proceeded by doing some animal studies um, even though we realized that we were not going to actually need more of these devices on our um, campus or, or our adjacent campuses. And so we continued, however, with the study just to make sure that we have an open source design that has been tested. And so here you have a picture of it actually being tested and a video. <coughs> So 
So as you can see, the amount of air and the rate was very different from what you saw in the simulation testing because when we were doing those videos, we were essentially trying to understand the thresholds of volume and speed. However, here we were actually trying to understand how far and how long we could ventilate a, a human being or an, a, an animal with um, similar breath capacity. And so the inspiration expiratory ratio was one to two, uh, the breaths per minute were 15, and the volume was around 500 milliliters of tidal volume. So from these animal studies, as an interdisciplinary team, we couldn't ignore the fact that there's uh, euthanasia that comes as part of the protocol of our um, study. And so by discussing with some of the engineers and medical students in the team, we found that people were really struggling with the fact that we had to euthanize some of the research animals that we work with, not just these sheep that gave their lives for Eurus and for us to understand the actual safety and efficacy of the device, which we have proven that we can at least ventilate someone for two hours. Um, there's also a lot of animal studies that we all as researchers in the field have to deal with. And so together we wrote this meditation on animal sacrifice, the cycle of life, the persistence of survival, and the anatomical, mechanical, and chemical functions of breathing. And it was done with um, our entire team, including the uh, chair of respiratory therapy here at UTMB. And so one of... Uh, our colleagues, who is an artist, Eurus, brought these... Devising a breath. Thank you, 1550 and 1538. Brought this to a conference and presented it and had um, people essentially be put through the breathing machine of this actual uh, meditation. And so it has been also inspiring to continue generating creative interventions for medicine and well-being at large thank you thank you